morning, this is the bank of Wet Beaver Creek, and I'm going to break here to talk an anime. The Black Lagoon. On the blue shores of the warm South Pacific, the fictional Thai city of Rowanapur is a wretched hive of scum and villainy, the current home of expatriate lowlifes from all over the world. Mobsters, murderers, pirates, terrorists, thieves, and smugglers find anything to be got here for a price. Gunfights are commonplace, and the police look the other way. This is the world of Black Lagoon, a violent and vulgar action crime anime set in this city. Japanese salaryman Rokuro Okajima doesn't know anything about that kind of world until his boss sends him on a mission to deliver some important corporate documents. Then he finds himself taken hostage by a small band of pirates bent on blackmailing his company with those documents. Perhaps it's the Stockholm Syndrome, where hostages come to sympathize with their captors. Or perhaps it was learning that his boss considered him expendable. But when the crisis is over, the salaryman abandons his company, country, and kin, and joins the pirates, picking the nickname Rock. Rock's new underworld boss is Dutch, a large, cool, intelligent pirate who commands the Lagoon Company, ostensibly a shipping company based in Roanapur. Revy is the gang's firepower and psycho gunslinger. She's a trigger-happy, hard-drinking, foul-mouthed bitch always spoiling for a fight. In contrast, Benny is their mild-mannered technician and mechanic. Back in Rowanapur, we'll also get to meet some of the local gangsters. The Lagoon's most frequent employer is Balalaika, a ruthless former officer of the Soviet Army who took her squad of veteran soldiers private after the Union was dissolved and settled into Rowanapur's Hotel Moscow. Rock is clearly in over his head. He'll confess late in the series that he lives in a twilight world, working with the mercenaries of the Lagoon Company and the Rowanapur gangster employers as a negotiator and accountant, while still wearing his salaryman uniform of white shirt and tie and refusing to carry a gun. He leaves the killing to others all too happy to oblige. After watching the series twice, I still don't buy his series to become a pirate. I can see why he might quit the corporate world or be disaffected from his family, but he's obviously not comfortable with the pirate life either. In their heavily armed relic of a World War II torpedo boat, the Lagoon Company deliver just about anything for anyone, no questions asked. And when they're sent to pick something up, they don't mind if the current owner wasn't planning on parting with it, or whether he survives the exchange. It's mayhem on land and sea. I'm picking up something and it's coming straight at us, but it's not a boat. It's at three hours, five minutes. Can you see anything? It's a gunship at minimum altitude. This isn't good. We're in serious shit. He's firing at us. I'm pretty sure I know it's not good, Dutch. Black Lagoon is both violent and vulgar. It's about dishonest and generally dislikable people in a very ugly and dangerous world. The plots are episodic, about specific jobs the Lagoon Company pulls off. Most of the story spans several episodes, the longest being the six-part story at the end of the series that washes ashore back in Japan. All this mayhem is beautifully drawn and animated by the fine folks in Madhouse. The character designs are clean and there's lots of full-figure motion. The background is appropriately shadowy, dirty, and ugly, except when we're at sea when the ocean is at least as clear and beautiful. The animation is fluid and fast, with imaginatively choreographed high-energy gunfights and lots of collateral damage. In the tradition of heroic action movies, the main characters never seem to get shot. The way they run unsaved through a hail of lead makes me think they could walk through the rain and not get wet. For variety, we also have some fist fights, knife fights, foot chases, car chases, boat chases, and abundant explosions. The series music, aside from the raucous opening themes that I didn't care for, is by Edison. It delivers the kind of beat and high-energy excitement that helps propel the action, but I didn't really understand the point of some of the softer music. The main problem with Black Lagoon is its characters. They're all criminals, of course, either murderers or accomplices. I wouldn't want to meet any of these scum in real life. They might try to mine emotionally involving stories by focusing on the victims, but most of the time those are either other mobsters, greedy corporations, or neo-Nazis. The other way is to humanize the Lagoon Company by fleshing them out with more personality and background. After all, Tony Soprano might have been a murderous mobster, but he also loved his kids and had trouble with his golf swing. We know a bit of Rock's story already. 
Black Lagoon makes a small attempt to fill in some background for Revy and Balalaika too, but if it's trying to explain why they are the way they are today, to make this a tale of modern alienation, it's not really enough. They're never going to convince me that there's a sweet young woman hidden beneath Revy's angry, murderous rages anyway. Black Lagoon is strangely silent in everyone's present lives outside of piracy. The full series spans a year. Do these guys ever party? Have hobbies? Get laid? Gang rules are that no one sticks their nose into what their compatriots do outside of the job, but shouldn't the anime display some curiosity about these people if we're supposed to care about them? So, in the end, appreciating this story depends on just being familiar with these characters over the length of the series. For the final six parts of the series, the story takes a slightly different approach and adds a supporting character that we might actually care about. It's the first hint the series gives of establishing an emotional attachment with either the audience or the cast member, and we have fewer gunfights. It was my favorite part of the show. So, in the end, we're left with a well-animated action series well, that will delight fans of big shootouts and fast-paced action, but doesn't offer much in the way of sympathetic character development. I give Black Lagoon three stars because as fast and furious as it went, it didn't take me any place that I wanted to go. Maybe it's supposed to have some sort of gangster cool, but that wasn't enough for me. I remember when anime was set in outer space or an alternate universe, or in Japan, usually Tokyo. Now it's Italy, France, New York, Pakistan, Chicago, London, and the South Pacific. There must be some awesome location scouting trip tax breaks for animators in Japan right now. Black Lagoon was shown on the U.S. Stars Premium Network, and it was released on DVD by Genian and distributed by Funimation in North America. Individually, it's six DVDs of four episodes each. The two complete seasons come in steel cases with four DVDs each. The fourth DVD in each set is for extras, and they're almost empty. For example, the fourth DVD of the second Barrage box set has a minute and a half promotional video, a textless opening, and two textless endings for a total of eight minutes of video on the whole DVD. I can't believe they even bothered to press that. Thanks for listening.